sad. But he still obeyed God and set off the next morning. He loaded firewood onto his donkey and put his sacrificial knife into his belt. Then he took his son's hand and led him away from the tent. They reached the mountain which God had meant after three days. Father, we have wood for a fire, but where is the lamb for the slaughter? asked Isaac. And Abraham answered, God will choose the sacrificial victim. After a while, they had climbed the mountain, and Abraham built an altar and piled wood onto it. Then he tied his son up and laid him on top of the altar. Abraham took his knife and was ready to sacrifice his son when the angel of the Lord called down from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, stop, do not harm the boy. I know now that you obeyed God and that you were ready to give up your own son. Abraham looked up and saw a ram which had caught its horns in the undergrowth. He took the animal and sacrificed it to God instead of his son. Then Abraham heard the voice of God a second time. As you were ready to sacrifice your own son to me, I will bless you and make you rich. Your offspring will be as numerous as the stars in heaven and as the grains of sand in the sea. All the people of the earth will know your name and be blessed by you. Abraham was very happy once again, and he and his son Isaac both left the mountain. Isaac and Rebecca. When Isaac had grown into a young man, Abraham said to his servant, It is time for my son to marry. But the woman should not be from Canaan. She should come from Mesopotamia, our home. So Abraham gave the servant ten camels and many valuable presents. Then he sent him off on the long journey to his relatives. The servant travelled for many months until he finally saw in the distance the familiar city walls of his home. As it was evening when he arrived, he rode to the well in front of the city to rest his animals. But the servant was worried. What should I do now? How will I know if the woman that I see is the right one for Isaac? So he knelt down and prayed to God. Oh God of my Lord Abraham, give me a sign so that I can recognize the right woman for Isaac. Soon the girls from the city will come down to the well to draw water for their families. I will ask the first girl to give me some water from her pot. If she's friendly and gives me a drink and then offers my camels a drink too, then I will know that I have found the right woman for Isaac. The servant had hardly finished praying when a very beautiful girl came out of the city with a water pot on her shoulder. She went to the well to draw fresh water. The servant looked at her carefully and then politely asked her, May I have some water from your pot? The girl smiled and said, Yes, do drink. When you have drunk enough, I will fetch more for your camels to drink. When they had all drunk enough to quench their thirst, the servant gave the girl a golden ring for her nose and two bracelets. He asked her, Will you tell me who you are, and is there enough space in your father's house for me and my camels? The girl answered, I am Rebecca, Bethuel's daughter. We also have food for the animals and a place for you to sleep too. Then she ran home, and the servant was pleased that he had met Rebecca and had found Abraham's relatives. He knelt down and thanked God. Laban, Rebecca's brother, went to the city gate to fetch the servant and brought him home to his family's house. Everyone was pleased that he was visiting and invited him to eat. But the servant said, 
First, I want to tell you who I am and why I have come here. Everyone was very surprised as he explained that Abraham had sent him to look for a wife for his son Isaac. The family listened in astonishment as they heard how the servant had tried to discover who would be the right wife for Isaac. The stories and the festivities continued all night. The next morning, the servant prepared for his journey home. But Rebecca's parents asked him to stay a while longer. They didn't want to be separated from their daughter so soon. But he answered them, "Oh, please don't delay me. God has allowed me to make this journey, and I would like to return to my master Abraham as soon as possible." Her parents called to Rebecca with heavy hearts and asked her, "Do you want to go with him now?" "Yes," answered Rebecca. So her parents blessed her, and Rebecca left with her maids and Abraham's servant on the journey to Canaan. Isaac was out in the fields when he saw the caravan of camels approaching, and Rebecca saw him coming from the field. She got down from her camel and asked Abraham's servant, "Who is that man coming towards us?" The servant answered, "That is Isaac." So Rebecca took off her veil and uncovered her face, and while everyone went to the tent to hear the servant tell of his experiences. Isaac took Rebecca by the hand to the tent where his mother had lived when she was still alive, and Rebecca became Isaac's wife soon afterwards. Esau and Jacob. Isaac and Rebecca were married for many years, and they were very happy. One day they were especially pleased. God had heard Isaac's prayers, and He had given Rebecca two children. They were twins. Esau was born first, and Jacob came quickly afterwards, holding on to his brother's heel. The two babies didn't look at all like twins. Esau had red, ruddy hair all over his body, while Jacob's skin was soft and light. As Jacob and Esau grew up, everybody wondered at how little the brothers took after each other. Esau used to enjoy going hunting with his father and working in the fields, while Jacob preferred to stay near the tents. He enjoyed helping his mother with her work, and he was a very good cook. One day, Esau came back from the fields. He'd been working very hard and was very hungry. A delicious smell was coming from the kitchen as Jacob had been cooking again. As Esau smelled it, he became even hungrier. "What have you been cooking?" he called to his brother. "Let me have some to eat. I'm dying of hunger." Jacob answered him, "It's a lentil stew. Mother showed me how to make it." "Just let me eat some," said Esau. But Jacob was cunning and said to his brother. If I give you some food, you have to give me your birthright in return. If that's what you want, you can have it. I am dying of hunger. What good is my birthright to me? Answered Esau, who was getting angry. Swear it to me, insisted Jacob. And that's what happened. Esau swore the oath and was given his food. But Jacob got the birthright and stood to inherit all of his father's property. Isaac had become very old and was blind. He thought that he would die soon, so he called Esau, his oldest son, to his bedside and said to him, "Go and fetch your bow and arrow, and hunt some wild game for me. Cook and season the meat just how I like it, and when I have eaten it, I will bless you before I die." Now Rebecca was listening to this. And as soon as Esau had left, she called to Jacob, who was her particular favourite, and she said to him quietly, "Go quickly and get me two goats from the fields. I'm going to prepare them for your father, just as he likes them. When I have cooked them, you must bring your father his food before your brother comes back. I want your father to bless you and for you to inherit his property." 
Then Rebecca gave him Jacob's best clothes and laid the goatskins around his